Counting crows. Yeah, <laughs> counting crows. You say counting crows, or what was I thinking? No, it's, <laughs> it's count in crows, like count on them. It's when they uh, changed up the band and it was Count Dracula singing instead of... Uh, <laughs> okay, then we you're, 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 uh, and, uh, you're thinking of uh, the count. I think you were doing like an association in your head, but you didn't know where else to go. Like, you get step one down, great, and then step two, you're like, you, you arrive and you're like, ah, oh, someone bail me out. Step two, make felt puppet. <laughs> one, two. Yeah, no, I mean, I think Bob thinks that Count Dracula is the count from Sesame Street. I feel like <laughs> it does. A- I think it does. Uh, was, Bram Stoker's The Count. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's do this stupid show. <laughs> Halloween themed, right? Because I my word is definitely not. Welcome to Word Rango, the game show where dictionary definitions produce knowledge and comedy. Four words enter, one word leaves, and is crowned champion. Our steely nerve competitors, a writer, another writer. A voice actor and another guy. And now it's gloves off and set your dictionaries to fun. It's time for Word Rango. Here's your host, Mike Spookzak. Uh, welcome to Word Rango. My name is Mike Suzak. I'm concerned uh, for us all right now. Yeah, I know. I- I'm joined by Bob, who's taking a shit. Bob Ball. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Hinkle. <laughs> it sounded like Jimmy Stewart taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Ryan Lewis. <laughs> yep. All right, cool. Well, that's a guy in a in a white sheet. That's just walking around going, Ooh. Yeah, yeah. This is our special Halloween episode, everyone. Happy Halloween. It's cool. It's great. Uh, we are going this week. We're going around town. Knocking on doors, convincing Taking everyone. Taking your candy, egg in your Taking house. Taking your candy, egg, egg in your house, throwing toilet paper over your trees. It's nothing you could do about that. It's just what we do. Yeah, we're young uh, and full of life, and you can't stop us. Exactly, and we're going to be all hopped up on some fucking sugar, thanks to you guys, too. Uh, getting some of like those those candy apple suckers, you know. That and, nougat? Like, Give me all that nougat. Get all that nougat. <laughs> that Ted nougat. <laughs> Ted nougat. <laughs> it's really passionate about chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. guns <laughs> and gun control, uh, yeah. And chocolate guns, man. Like just like t-shirt guns, except it just shoots chocolate all over, oh. like in my mouth. I just want that. I just want all the chocolate, basically. But what I also want is I want words and definitions, and that's what we normally do, and that's what we're going to continue doing, regardless of Halloween. Maybe some of it's going to be Halloween themed. Most of it probably won't be, and that's fine. Let's be and, honest. <laughs> like, think, Mike's part won't be, and that's fine. <laughs> and you, you know what though? <laughs> think of it this way, guys. Halloween is like it's the mixed bag of all holidays because you dress up. And, and and you pretend to be anything. Like, for instance, one year for Halloween, I legitimately, this isn't a lie, I dressed as a Christmas tree. Mm. And I had, like, ornaments and garland. I even had lights. It was awesome. And people were like, dude, it's not Christmas. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not going to dress as a Christmas tree on Christmas. You know, like, that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> I like so it really in their Hall- minds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, like, obviously, Halloween's the only time of year to do that. You know, you can do anything as it relates to any holiday. Uh, I mean, like you could celebrate Martin Luther King Day uh, <laughs> on Halloween. You could do whatever yeah. you want. You I mean, could. Did, I'm surprised though that they didn't give you shit. Like, dude, Susan, it's not Arbor Day. What are you doing? Like, you know, like they're super True. upset about that. But yeah, I'm just walking like- around with bottles of Arbor Mist, mm-hmm. and I was like, get it. Uh, nope. But hey, you know what? We need someone to start this week. Last week, Ryan, you and I uh, tied. You had Hercismus, I had Al Gore. Uh, both are fantastic. <laughs> I think what we'll do in the spirit of Halloween, uh, I will let you go first. How about that? <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> and in the spirit of Halloween, he will push you into the guy with a running chainsaw. Yeah, oh. th- exactly that. Exactly that. Like It's sort of like you get to go ahead of me in the haunted house. But the haunted house has like, there's like a death there every year, you know? This, for some reason, it oh. hasn't gotten shut down yet. That's sort of this podcast in a nutshell. Ryan, you get to start. What's your word this week? <laughs> ah. Well, guys, yes, we pump can. Am I right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no. So, my word this week is a very special word. 
in that it's a word that doesn't have anything to do with Halloween necessarily, yeah. but it has to do with life and loving life. My word this week is deflocculate. Ooh. I like it. Yeah. Uh, let me let me take a crack at that spelling. Deflocculate. D e f l o c k u l a t e. Pretty close. It's a double C, which is interesting, right? Ooh. Instead of the C K. Okay. Okay. So D e f l o c c u l. That, you're, you're spelling deflocculate. It's defloc. <laughs> so one one o two c's. D e f. That's what I said, isn't it? You said o o, unless it was just a really like you stuttered when you said it. Oh, 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 oh. You were really excited that you got you got to the o, so you were like oh 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 oh. Uh, c c u l a t e o. I see. Can your word be deflocculate? Because that sounds like fun too. It does. does. It does. Uh, this this deflocculate though, I, I like it a lot too. Uh, Dave, why don't you take the first crack? What do you think deflocculate means? All right. Well, uh, I had this very. Di- I I feel like it can be both. It can either be the double C or it can be the K. And basically, it's this scenario. You guys ever see those Snicker commercials where you have a friend who's like, you know, they act a certain way because they're hungry. They act like Betty White or like whatever. Um, yeah. Well, you know, the real world version, the non-brand marketing version of that is that we all have those times when we get a little bit out of our gourd. You know, maybe we had too many drinks. Maybe we just got fired at work. Like maybe we found our dad making out with another dude <laughs> in the shed out behind the house. Like, you know, it's a lot of weird things happen and you kind of get out of yourself. And uh, the two different scenarios are basically you can retreat inward and kind of go the flock of seagulls route where you just basically put on some mascara on your face and like start hitting the keyboard real hard and uh, you kind of just get into your own flock. Or you could go the walk of flocker route where you just go outward and really like against the world and just you're going to ghost ride that whip and the man is not going to stop you. You know what I mean? Um, so you can have either, either two of those. But to deflocculate is to be a good friend or a pal who comes in and saves somebody from that. That flocculation, that flock situation. So uh, uh, it's a very valuable service. You might get, you know, one person ever in your life that's willing to deflocculate you, but uh, you know, it's a, it's a very vital service in the context of saving lives. So, so what do you? Let's say you are you work as like a mm-hmm. deflocculation counselor. Okay. What What do you do? Well, first you have of... to identify the warning signs, right? Like, okay, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's. I mean, I would say that's where you got to start, no matter what. No okay, matter what so the, the warning, is. the warning signs being like, you know, heavy perspiration for starters, right? <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, like heavy perspiration, uh, a lot of grunting. Um, no, if you find certain things laying around, it's like, oh, I remember yesterday this jean jacket had sleeves on it. Or like, mm. uh, you know, now it doesn't. <laughs> or like, you know, oh, I found this Casio keyboard tucked behind the dinner tray tables behind the couch. Like, who would hide a Casio keyboard back here? Right. Or like, it's like finding stray syringes. You know, something's up. Yeah, Wait, so yeah, this yeah, is pretty much. them. This is them about to like go flock of seagulls on it. Like, yep. go straight. Yeah, flock of seagulls. And then of course, oh. you know, when you have your walk of flock, uh, it's a little bit different. I mean, they'll start speaking differently uh, in that they won't fully enunciate words and uh, will you know, just kind of walk around in very garish wear, just like big chains and stuff like that. And you know, they're going mm-hmm. that flock around. If every little thing that you say to them or bring up, it turns into a big fight. It's like, you know, they flare up, then, you know, they're going that flock around. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. It's a crazy world out there. You should uh, get your face out of them books and go experience it. <laughs> Whoa! Well, I, right. I mean, I don't know. Like, I just feel like you guys read too much. You read too much. <laughs> that took a very accusatory turn. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, just things get too much. I can see how people would decide to flocculate. You know, because sometimes just you know the pressure gets to you, and you just want to run, run so far away. <laughs> yeah, because you, know, you couldn't get away. So you know, it makes perfect sense. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I, I'm into that. I, I like the idea of there being a service that helps others, mm-hmm. uh, you know, stop themselves from going either the walk a flock route or the flock of seagulls route. Mm-hmm. I like that. I, I love that. It's also sort of like house calls and stuff, you know, because you're bringing, you're bringing that service to them instead of them having to, uh, flap, flap their way out to you. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> uh, Bob, what do you think deflocculate means? You know, I know that at least one of us has actually interviewed a flock of seagulls. Um, 
I mean, not not the band. I mean, just talk to a lot. <laughs> I get drunk down at the dock a lot, so it was probably me. <laughs> and that's the one I was shooting for. Uh, Deflocculate. Um, now this is a uh, you know kind of one like the wind's been taken out of you, uh, but it's when your online relationship takes a deeply disturbing turn. You know, in the beginning, that seemingly inviting profile on OK Neptune that new sailor-based website. <coughs> Look, looks great. Her, her name is Ema. She, you know, she wasn't married, no kids, loved the sea, sushi, long walks on the beach. She was delighted by your profile too, huh? Poseidon's folly. <laughs> you, you've exchanged emails and texts for like weeks now. And finally, finally, she wants to meet you. You know, she's been on, out on business in the South Pacific for a while. She, she wants to come see you and unwind. She says there's this little sushi place on the pier that she's always wanted to try, and, and she'll meet you there, and she'll be the one with the sailboat pin on and the flowing red hair. You show up and reserve a table for two at 7.30. As the sunset starts to turn into darkness, you, you start to worry that she won't show up. Then you hear something in the distance. It screams crashes. More screams. And you don't dare leave your seat, though. What if she shows up and you miss her? And then in front of this, in front of the, the sushi place, with a crash of glass and a, a primal, otherworldly scream, you see it. And your heart sinks. It's a 50-foot tall something with a, a long mane of flowing red hair. And that wasn't a sailboat pin. It's a sailboat pinned beneath her briny, tentacled beard. Your date has arrived. That screen name, Ema? Oh, that was spelled I-M-A. And her last name was Kraken. <laughs> it all makes sense now. You're in love with the sea monster. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and that's, and that's Deflocula. <laughs> I can't get those two minutes back. I mean, I can't. I just like to point out, like, that, you know, Bob edits the show, but, like, he didn't edit that in and, you know, just had that this long. Like, we were there legit. for that. We all we experienced it. We were there for it. the whole thing. Yeah. We were there. And I don't know. I was spellbound. Spell, spell binded? I was. Spellbounded. <laughs> spellbounded. Spell burritoed. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I mean, I guess if you're going to fall in love with a Kraken. What was, what was the Kraken's brother? The one that doesn't oh, do Kirken. anything? Yeah, Quicken. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he works on Quicken or whatever. I can't remember. <laughs> no, I think you're you're mistaking it. It's just, I think it's just the the younger brother of the Kraken. Well, yeah, yeah. Quicken is, is, is the, IT is the, or something. Quicken. Yeah, yeah, he's the uh, very geeky, antisocial type. Quicken was the if, slightly askew version of Quicken. Remember I'm where like one if, numbers <laughs> off? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I'm just wondering if if if. Quirkin is related to this Kraken, then maybe I don't know. I mean, I feel like we're building out the Kraken family tree. The Kraken a little bit here, it's probably a cousin. I guess maybe. Obviously, there, there there might be some relation. I mean, I hate I hate to be you know incorrect here in in assuming that all Krakens are related. I don't yeah. know that that's. You hate no. to be some sort of Kraken racist. You would be that guy. You would. I be know. That guy. I'm sorry to all Krakens out there. I, I really. I don't mean it. You know. I guess. I just assume there's so few of you. You know. <laughs> like we don't one, see right? you. I mean, yeah. You don't come out anymore. You know. Well, you could. You could see them all. They're all in OK Neptune. You, I mean, remember when we were in college, Krakens? You know. Oh, we you played so much Smash Brothers, out. dude. We used to just crush dominoes and play Smash Brothers. Man, what happened to you, dude? So much disc golf. <laughs> Anyways, I'm all disappointed in all the Krakens right now. Uh, but I have to give a guess as to what deflocculate means. I, I, hey, bef before you do that, can I have some points? <sighs> when you beg, <laughs> you get less. Let's put it that way. Okay, fine. I only want 15 million points. You just got 14.8 points. That's what you get. Okay? That's substantially less. Don't go spend them all in the same in, in one place. All right? In one ocean. Thanks, Grandpa. Uh, deflocculate. All right. I like this word a whole bunch. Ryan, I think it's a great word. Uh, I'm going to do my classic sort of break it down because when you when you introduce anything with like a DE in front of it or another uh, prefix, I, I immediately start thinking, well, how, do this, how does this work? So like if you take that out, you got flocculate. You got the ulate kind of thing. Uh, the flock part, I guess. All right. So 
I I suppose I think it might be mispronounced though. Maybe defloculate. Uh, <laughs> and so what happens is if you go to Starbucks is kind of like it's mega popular and it's we're all over it, right? I think we're we're all in agreement. We probably oh, still get so over it. We probably all still get Starbucks at different points. I don't think Starbucks is over it. Starbucks isn't over it, but we're over it. But but you know what Starbucks needs to do is they need to introduce maybe something that's more only for the adult crowd. So let's say you get a deflocu latte. That's a latte that is stirred <laughs> with a flaccid dick. And and when they deflaculate latte it, they're taking the flaccid flaccid dick out of out of the uh the deflocu latte. And I know what you're thinking. Who would dare want to drink a latte that had a dick in it? And Some guy named Tyler. Probably, first off. Uh, but I, I'm, you know, I mean, this is an adult. It's like it's like going and buying, like, penis-shaped straws at, like, an adult store. You know what I mean? For, like, a bachelorette party. But you're talking I mean, about, like, human-severed penises, right? Like, well, you're talking they don't about, have like, to be severed. Hey, you know... Uh, uh, it's Saturday. That means like we're doing a Starbucks charity drive. Got a dick to donate? Toss it in. You done with that dick? We'll take it. You know. Yeah. It's like recycling the battery in your cell phone. Like, is that what kind of dick standards do you have as a business? You know, as a business owner and as a consumer, well, this, it is Starbucks. This so, me. yeah. No, and it should. And I think maybe what we need to do is we need to get in touch with the federal dick administration and have them just get a look at all the dicks that are mm. being put in coffees. Right. The FDA that didn't get that website. They tried really hard, but they lost. They they lost that website. They did. Uh, that was what I thought of uh, as far as putting dicks in coffee. I thought that would work out well, but, you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh Ryan, what does flocculate flocu- flocu- <laughs> mean? <laughs> what, what kind of flocculate would you like? <laughs> what, is it like a Add pumpkin it. spice? I don't know. Stick a dick in a pumpkin and then throw it in the coffee? I don't know. And can I get some chocolate sprinkles on that? Yeah, like cocculate. <laughs> um, yeah, so deflocculate, um, I think we should just go with it, uh, basically means to reduce or break up from a flocculent state, which, which basically means to break into very tiny particles. So, like, if you're so pissed at someone, you're like, I want to crush your face into smithereens. You say, bro, you're pissing me off. I want to deflocculate your shit, basically. Hmm. So it's just a kind of more refined... You know, I like to think of Word Wrangle that there are some people out there that actually take these words and say, hey, I'm going to expand my vocabulary. <laughs> and they go out there and they, they use a lot of these words. This is one I feel like you could use quite a bit. Like, you know, you're making dinner and you need to like, you know, just mash something to, you know, put it in the microwave and eat it. So you're like, you know, pulling out, like you're going to defloculate it, man. Impress your friends, impress your family by by saying that you're going to defloculate something. I'm into it. Mm-hmm. I'm really into it. Yeah, you And be. you're right. I think it is one that could be used. I mean, I it's not, it it's no Gary, right? You know, it's no adroit. <laughs> no, 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 few <laughs> words are Gary. Let's just, it is, it, but I mean, it's no Ganch. You it's, know, no, it's no, it's no, no Yach, it's no Yachtan, right? Because you never I think all three one. of those are, are Dave Hinkle joints, but yes. Yes. He's the bringer of good words, but this <laughs> is does. a really good one, I think. This is, yeah, we say it, uh, we've said it before where there are ones, like you said, that, that people would use, um, but I mean, you know, it's usually up in the air how much we really would use them. This is a little bit of a mouthful, but at the same time, it's it's yeah, I think it'll I, stick with you. I people. think it's a, enough of a mouthful. That's the kind it of is. word you want. You don't you don't want a word that's too simple. Uh, but you know, and you also don't want a word that's like this, you know, enormous word that people are not going to remember. But I think deflocculate has just enough symbol or syllables and just enough like just kind of meat to it that it's just something that you could actually could catch on, you know. Mm-hmm. And be used in in all of our daily vocabularies. I dig it. I mm-hmm. dig it. Or if so, if someone's robbing you, you could just say the word "defloculate," and they're just going to be confused. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and give you enough time to run away. You don't have to use it in the right context. As long as you're using it, that's all I care about. Defloculate hither. Yeah, because you get royalties on that word, don't you? I should. Yeah. Uh, let's go with Dave. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Sure. Would you Dave, like a what's... word, sir? Uh, yeah. What's your word this week? All right, my word this week is ward corn. <laughs> what is it? Wait, what? <laughs> Hold on, what was that? <laughs> All right, my word this week is ward corn. 
Word corn? <laughs> Word corn. <laughs> Word corn what, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Word corn. So like is this uh I'm I'm jumping right into a into a guess here if you don't mind. No, is go this for it. is this the dictionary that's made entirely out of the lyrics to corn songs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Something takes a part of me. <laughs> uh, Dead words everywhere. <laughs> Dead words everywhere. How, how is Tell me, how is this spelled? All right, this is spelled W A R D C O R N. Oh, ward corn. <laughs> ward corn. Ward corn. Ward corn. Ward corn. Ward corn. Ward 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 corn. Ward corn. I can't uh, saying this just... word makes me feel like I'm like Danish or from <laughs> you know like the Netherlands. <laughs> Are you sure that's how it's pronounced? It's not like ward corn or anything. <laughs> no, it's straight up ward corn. It's ward uh, corn. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, I guess I guess I'll stick with that. I'll stick with that. Probably. I do think that corn has something to do with this. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, as in the band, as in the shitty band. Uh, I had a, I had a high school English teacher uh, that we, all, we that all did, right? We all did. Uh, some more than others. I had I probably had it the least. Uh, that made jokes about the best of corn as as a thing. I guess I don't know. Uh, word corn. That. What do you guys? I mean, I guess Ryan. What do you think that means? We, okay, so we got to break it down in the sense of what is corn, right? Well, corn we know is it's it is a starch. It's something. It's basically something that grows in the. I'm trying to figure out what corn is. Yeah. Can we clearly <laughs> define corn for me? Because it, I know what you, it looks it, like. We consider but, it. We consider it a, a vegetable, right? I mean, no, now, I don't can think I have it the is. Root of corn, please. Can I have the root of corn? <laughs> yeah. Right. I love. Okay. First off, this is amazing. Uh, I type in corn. The first thing is Wikipedia, except the Wikipedia entry is maize. Like, fuck you, bitches. We call it corn. Stop it. Why are you calling it maize? Apparently, no, it's actually maize. That's that's ridiculous. Nobody oh. calls it maize. Do you guys ever call it maize? Uh, in Spanish, it's maize, so I oh, can see whatever. how you could confuse that. But yeah, and, no. And when I say it, it's called mayonnaise. Oh, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> I think he's confused his, yeah, his sandwiches taste super weird. Like, where are all these um, more yellow chunks in here? Um, it, it's a plant, so yeah, there's that. You know, it's a plant. So corn actually has more DNA than human beings totally true um which is weird but i do believe that it's some kind of a starch i don't think it's a vegetable and so we break that down what is corn so it's something that you can make popcorn out of it's something that you can make you know thanksgiving day decorations out of um you can basically make food and sugar and paste and like clothing and socks and feed cows with it so corn is this basically this ultimately all-powerful substance that that we've used for basically every. I mean, you can power cars with corn. So what is word corn then? Well, word corn is basically something where you can take words to do anything. So, um, like crossword puzzles, uh, <laughs> podcast dedicated to words in general. It's basically the usage of words to do everything. Basically, passwords so, like passwords. No, 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 no. Like someone basically is like, "Hey, can you fix my sink?" And you just start writing words down on a sheet of paper because oh. in your mind you think words can do everything and you can get words to do everything. Ultimately, it's not going to fix the sink, but it's it's this this widely held belief by people that think that words are all powerful that can do anything you can take words and you can accomplish anything basically so it's it is that is that explained like when harry potter would yell fucking words you know you're talking spells right spells sure but it's the same thing right it's all just cornamentus cornamentus uh (laughs) word of word of mentis freak on a leash and then like (laughs) a a freak on a leash showed up or something i don't know what the spell is no i don't know i'm trying to i'm honestly i'm trying to uh to shape this definition into something more than probably what it was going to be. But I really like the idea of it going down the path where there's like a group of people in the world who think that like, basically if they write shit down or if they think a word in their head that it will actually happen or actually accomplish something. Yeah. Um, they were the kids who like when they were little babies, like they maybe held on to those little letters that you stick on the fridge a little too long, like maybe into like first, second, third, fourth. They're in junior high, high school, and they're still playing with these little toy letters. 
and it comes to this belief basically that that words are everything and can accomplish anything that's not true okay so sort of maybe maybe like hashtag activism right <laughs> sure don't you think it's so like word. people's people well, yeah but like that's like the phrasing for people that are like social media activists like all we do is we talk about this one topic and we use this one term is that and really then it think never people ends. do Yes. You do hash, hashtag think activism. Of like Co- think of like Coney 2012. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but they didn't, didn't they do hashtag Coney 2012? They did. Did they also do hashtag activism? Probably. But Are you just I giving mean, me an example? Yeah, no, I'm giving you an example of it. But basically, oh. you know, it was people that were like, oh, this needs to be stopped. Look at this YouTube video. And it's like they thought they were accomplishing something <laughs> right, by basically by, okay. shouting Coney 2012 on all their accounts. Okay, I thought you were saying there's like a group of people out there who are just like, if you want to make a point, you got to make sure you put hashtag activism. So you're just like... <laughs> no, they're the not, only they're tweets anybody that. reads anymore, man. <laughs> yeah, it's know. the only ones. I'm actually, actually going to go to hashtag activism <laughs> and see like if that's... If there are people who think that's how it works, like it's a term. It's a term basically for like social media activists, you know, essentially. Uh, not to belittle anybody's sort of, uh, you know, the things they try to accomplish as far as awareness and stuff goes, and creating discussions and whatever it is they care about. But uh, I think, in some respects, that's a, that's an example of what you're talking about about people that think that they can just sort of say words and that it, it'll just fix problems when that's not really the case. Yeah. Yeah, words rarely do, guys. They really <laughs> rarely do, yeah. <laughs> Except when it, in the context of this podcast. Yes, and all the comedy humor within. And, and not only that, but our business ventures, mm-hmm. our, our world-saving ideas that we have constantly. <laughs> They're yeah. mostly just words. And also, I mean, Paul, also Paul Troon. <laughs> Paul Troon. <laughs> oh, that's Paul, right. Troon. Paul Troon. That guy wouldn't even exist if it weren't for us. Hi, Paul. He really should be very grateful. Yeah. That guy's life is the equivalent of like reverse Back to the Future photo like catastrophe. <laughs> I mean, like, so he here has we a had photo an empty, and he <laughs> we, we had an empty Polaroid. It was just a picture of some <laughs> dumb house or something, and we willed Paul Troon into existence. You know, like yep. he just showed He's, up. Yeah, it, it's sort of like it's sort of like if you if you watched the what is it 1991? No, it, maybe it was the 80s. That movie, The Fly, <laughs> in reverse. <laughs> where you know you know how it winds up with jeff goldblum mm-hmm. yeah. and then and then like just Jurassic the Park. mess that he's in at the end but then in reverse you know like so it just he started out as this like globby mess you know and mm-hmm. then yeah we willed him into being a real person that we can we can try and get to be friends on linkedin <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hi paul troon <laughs> yeah, hi, paul. Hi, paul. Into it. uh who's who's next i think bob bob <laughs> what do you think word corn means before I start, can I have a couple of points? No, you don't just get points. I, 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 I mean, like it doesn't work that way. I need to award them to you. I will not award you points for asking for points. This isn't, oh, wait, this is Halloween, son of a bitch. Okay, fine, you get 20 points. Yay, points, please. Okay, uh, award corn. The corn monster that lives outside of your Midwestern town, you know, the one they call... Cornucopia. <laughs> he must be stopped. He's he's eaten like fourteen of your friends on the fourteen nights before Halloween, and now Halloween night, you are the only one left in. Wouldn't town it make sense for eat. it to be thirteen? Yeah. Because yeah. uh, hey, hey be listen, I don't crawl into the mine of cornucopia. <laughs> no one does. He's all about like you know full weeks. He's how he works. <laughs> he was contracted out for two weeks. Well, so. every every day is unlucky. Her. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> Every day is a winding road, so gets a little close. You know, we need we need to keep that tagline for the movie poster. <laughs> Cornucopia. Every day is unlucky. So you need to start beginning to study the dark arts. You know, like witchcraft and Mormonism <laughs> and sous vide cooking. Then you find the one ward ward to protect yourself. Popcorn. So you spread your sous vide popcorn around the room and it protects you for one more Halloween. But when you wake up, who didn't protect themselves? Ward corn! Can I have some more points now? No, you don't. I don't even know what the <laughs> fuck you're talking about. I mean, the first definition for the last word, you, you, you really had us for... I don't understand what the hell happened there. What the heck is... What would you call that cooking style? Peruvian? 
I guess. <laughs> Peruvian cooking styles? Does it's a Peruvian sous vide cooking. Okay. Is it right. like, or did you say soothing cooking? Like you just whisper sweet shit to your food as you're like <laughs> it? You put on some Kenny G while you're like, <laughs> yeah, you're I like, like it. just relax, ramen. It's all good, baby. It's all good. <laughs> Gonna mash these potatoes with Kenny in my glass of Chardonnay. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, word corn. <laughs> yeah. Word word corn. Uh, and that's word corn. Speaking of, Dave, why don't you hit us with the uh, definition for word corn? All right, I can't also, wait to also hear this your one. best shot, too. <laughs> hit, hit word corn that. is a payment of corn in place of military service. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bring that back. Like, you're getting drafted, sucker. Oh, yeah. Like, corn, motherfucker. <laughs> like, I just imagine, like, a kid sitting down with his parents, right? He's, like, 18 years old. Uh, he or she is 18 years old. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm signing up for the military dad you know i'm gonna go serve my country and like the parents freak out and they're like sitting there at night in bed and talking and they're like what can we do what can we do to get our child out of military service and then it's just like cut forward and a dump truck of corn is just like <laughs> being piled <laughs> like right next to the base it's like sign the papers all right you're good <laughs> your kid oh, doesn't dude. have to serve that <laughs> that's is fantastic. that's like the uh that's like the b plot to field of dreams basically like it's like you don't really follow that storyline until later like his daughter was supposed to serve in the military like he didn't give a shit about baseball like he just wanted to like pay the corn up to the military so his daughter didn't have to get drafted oh god also she lists joe that's so ridiculous what uh, um i mean i at first when you first read it i thought that maybe you would get paid in corn for your military service like you served you <laughs> came oh. you got you got to go home and then you wind up getting a bunch of corn in the mail yeah. like thanks for all your <laughs> all you did for your country but i guess in place that's that's even uh, you better. know man that would be amazing it would be i mean that, yeah that was yeah that was a deep oh, pun oh, there. That was a yeah thing. damn it damn it bob uh but yeah i i i I'm in favor of both. I mean, it really makes states like Iowa useful. So <laughs> sure. So is it like you know, like a five-star general retires and like they basically just get like a Scrooge McDuck money bin grain silo of corn that they can just swim yep. around in? Yeah. I'm rich, bitch, and like just diving in. I love it. Uh, awesome. All right. So before we get to our next words, I am going to uh, stop for a word from our sponsors, uh, in which we talk about costumes. Costume idea. See, the great thing about this episode is it's going to come out technically a couple days before Halloween. So you people that have last minute costume, you know, you, you're, you're running around. You're like, I got to dress up for Halloween, you know, go out with my friends. But what what am I going to do? Like, I, I don't have any ideas. We got sexy you covered. Sexy nurse? No. No, you don't want to be sexy nurse. Sexy, sexy Christmas tree? No. Mm, maybe. No. But you know what you could do is you could dress up in costumes that are based on word rango's entire universe of of words and ideas and we've got we've got dozens if not hundreds i'm sure uh that that would definitely suit someone's needs out there i'm sure uh and so what we'll do is i think we're gonna do two now and we'll do two after the other next word the other words and uh why don't we do ryan and dave since you guys gave us your words to start ryan uh i had asked each, each of you guys to bring us uh, a costume idea based on word rango's history ryan why don't you go first what what do you think people could dress up as this holiday season well so i think uh for the people who are very indecisive and you know like to to change things up quite a bit i feel like my costume idea is more of like a whole day plan basically it's it's Ooh. very involved but i think the payoff is there so it's worth it uh, because it's a multiple costume gig, but here's the deal. You can reuse parts of the costume because my word, my costume word is gynecocracy and you'll spend the whole day dressing up as different versions of Gina Davis. You have <laughs> <laughs> lawyer right, so Gina like Davis. League of her own. Nurse, uh, League of her own Gina Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Thelma and Louise Gina Davis. Wow. Um, President Gina Davis. Yeah, what crap. about that uh, pirate movie she was in, Gina Davis? Yar, I love that film. Beetlejuice. <laughs> I, 
I, I mean, now that you're saying this, not, now that you're going down the list, I'm realizing just how like those characters really stand out, like you can picture them, and that me means that the Halloween costumes themselves would work really, really well. I think so. And then you got the whole gynecocracy part of it, uh, how that mixes in, and you know how I feel about Gina Davis, so I am totally on board with this. You get like 750,000 points nice. hmm. for this. Uh, Yar, Gina Davis, call us. Great. I am, I'm very, very in favor. Good work, Ryan. Wow. Well, very know. impressed. Uh, Dave, what do you think people could dress up as for Halloween? Well, um, I would say you got to go as a ganch hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know how they have leper colonies? Okay, yeah. Well, they have these things called ganches, which is basically just ranches for people who have gout to just go and relax and kind of like... <laughs> You know, sit with their foot elevated just a little bit. Um, one of those kind of things. But, of course, you know, like any ranch, you need ranch hands. So you have ganch hands. You have these stout, you know, little dudes that just go around and basically move ottomans around and just kind of <laughs> massage people's <laughs> arms and legs. Um, you know, they're always quick with a, uh, a, a bit of uh, icy hot in their gun holster, their hip there. Um, you know, you can just be, be a little ganch hand. Go around and soothing people who have gout. <laughs> <laughs> Gitch! Uh, I would not want that job. <laughs> Gitch! <laughs> let's be let's be real though. Like any of our costume ideas, you're gonna have to be pretty dedicated because it's gonna take a lot of explaining, no matter what. <laughs> it, will. it will. I think that I I think there might be a few in there that people will be like, oh, okay, I understand it, you know. But uh, but this one here. <laughs> No, you would have to probably explain it. Because I take it, if you're going to be a Ganchand, you also have to have someone that has gout that you're sort of wheeling around <laughs> constantly, just helping them out and stuff. Oh, I get it. With them, okay, you're a Ganchand. Got it. Yeah, Got if, it. They, if they kind of punk you and don't show up, you're going to be in a world of trouble. Because you try explaining to someone what a Ganchand is. With, if you don't have the gout person there with you, you're going right. to have a hard time. They might mistake you for like a jackaroo or something, and that's just you don't want that. <laughs> Guy carrying thing. around a lot of icy hot and Ben Gay. Yeah. Just wait a minute. Let me let me put my hands on you. It'll feel so good. <laughs> Do you have gout? Let me let me get it out. Uh, <laughs> get gout. out Let's the get gout. Gout. <laughs> let it. Okay. Ganch. Ganch. Uh, <laughs> let's get our next word, Bob. Let's get you going. Going next. What's your word this week? Hello, Halloween fellows. This week's winning word is... Wood. <laughs> wood. <laughs> are, you wood. are you mispronouncing wood? <laughs> like... <laughs> wood. No, I think that's actually how it's spelled. I think it's W-O-O apostrophe D. <laughs> Bob, how's it wood. spelled? Wood is spelled W... U, D, <laughs> wood. You sure it's not wood. 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 What wood. up? Wood. I say that every day. What up? Wood. <laughs> hey, partner, you got some wood? Wood, <laughs> wood you can spare. Uh, wood. Wood. Does anyone have any wood for sheep? Uh, anyone wo wood for sheep? I don't. I don't even. I don't even know. Ryan, what do you think wood means? Well, I think wooed is just, it's basically an action. It's when you're just being very impolite to toddlers learning how to talk. And you're just being wooed. <laughs> you'd be so wooed. That's all I got. I mean, really, there's so many directions you can go with this. But all I can think of is... Because it's so short. There's, yeah. You're totally being a wick wooed about this. I can All I can think of is like uh, Stephanie Tanner from Full House. Like, how wooed? Like, right? Like, yeah. that's, that's all I can think of, even though Bob was using his best vincent price voice i think it's it's uh it's fun to be just a little rude to kids that aren't yours yeah you know because you can get away with it like especially if you're a stranger because they're never gonna see you again ideally you know you're in the grocery store maybe a grocery store you don't always go to you know and you just you just i don't know you like like there's a kid that's with their parents and they've got like have you guys seen them like the little shopping carts that the kids get to push around and they're always fucking ramming it into stuff and just getting it in everyone's way you know like maybe you could just kick it over you know and be like there i'm wooed <laughs> yeah. but yeah. that's what happens welcome got, to the real world motherfucker there's like, definitely a, definitely a line uh from being wooed and being just an asshole 
Like, I mean, like, <laughs> basically, and I think you crossed it on that one. I, mean, I, I might think, have. So, might have. Well, how, how about this? How about instead of kicking over a cart, Mike? Oh, how wooed. <laughs> um, if you were to just say, start dropping things in the cart, oh. which are going to cause different conversations, okay. like uh, lubricating jelly and uh, <laughs> condoms. Oh, or, I don't uh, know. <laughs> Oh, but what you want to do is you want to be... I, I get where you're going, Bob. I don't like where you're going. I get where you're going. What I think you could do then, if if I'm going to jump off of what you're saying, maybe then what you could do is you could drop in stuff in the cart in a more subtle way, something that they could believably buy. So that way you're just, you're just hiking up that bill. You know, that grocery bill is just going to go up and up the more things you manage to get in there without them really thinking you know so they'll be like oh you know put some apples in here he's like okay let's double that amount of apples you know or you know let's say they they you know they maybe they need more lemon juice maybe they need like a a 12 pack case of lemon juice instead you know oh, Why does it go back to the meat department have them special cut something for you <laughs> yes. and then drop it in there that's perfect that's oh, perfect man. that is that's rude. really messing with them i was think with a toddler like they're just basically trying to get away from being a baby anymore so you just put some baby bottles and some diapers in there and they'll get super pissed. They're like, I don't need that shit anymore. But right. you keep putting, just like dropping hints like, yeah, that's right, kid. You that's think right. you're hot you're shit right now? Baby, you can't do anything. Yeah, look at you put like car car. Put like car keys in there because then, they, then they're like, well, <laughs> shit, I don't have my license yet. Oh, I can't man. drive. I so now you're teasing me in the other direction with this. Ooh, take like some other lady's purse and put it in their tiny little cart. Oh, that's perfect. Un- under the meat that you had him cut. Yeah, oh, so man. then what you can do is <laughs> you could be thing. extra wooed and you could try and start a fight between one parent and another, oh, right? Oh, like, I, excuse me, is that my purse in your child's cart? I don't, I, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on here. Did, is, your, is your son stealing from me? And the baby is a baby, they can't talk. Uh, they can't talk until they're like six, right, Ryan? Back me up here. Uh, but, yeah, if they're really advanced, I mean, come on <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so like they can't defend themselves. So maybe what you could do is you could get a third person involved in these shenanigans. Is what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. I see now. This is awesome. Like just messing with kids. Woo! <laughs> just showing <laughs> just them what's up. Giving them the showing business. them what's what. Give them the business. <laughs> Wavishing Wick Wood. <laughs> Wavishing Wick Wood. Favorite wrestler. Yeah. Uh, Wood. I guess for me. I'll go next. I think Wood is uh, is the name of a brand of truck nuts for your desk. Because <laughs> it's like it's like as of now, truck nuts have only gone. I think we've put tr- tried putting truck nuts on doors as like a door knocker. I think that's happened. And I know truck nuts are normally hanging from you know the the back of a Ford or something. But what what we could do, you know, where do you spend most of your day? In each of our cases, I mean, I, I think most of us, we spend a lot of time at like a desk or, or whether if you work in an office, you're spending a lot of time at a desk. If you work in other places, you're, you're spending time at some sort of desk or a counter or something. And, and it's just boring. And like, think of how much time you are wasting away and you're not living it up. And like, you're thinking about, God, I got these truck nuts hanging from my truck and I spend no time in that truck. I don't get to really drive it around a lot to really show off these these shiny balls that are hanging off of my vehicle, you know? But what you could do is you could get truck nuts for your desk to show people that you are hardcore, that you're that you are a badass. Uh, and that, you know what, like, I know that I'm, I'm stuck at this nine to five that I only enjoy so much, you know, it brings in the bacon, but that's about it. You know, it's kind of a dead end job, but I got these truck nuts, you know, and that's all I need. Maybe they're hanging down. Like, you know, like you've got like your, your computer, maybe on on top, you got your keyboard and then hanging down off the desk, just underneath, right in front of you is just these truck nuts that maybe you accidentally bump into every once in a while. And it's just a reminder to you that, you know what, you still have a life that you're living, that this job isn't your life, you know? And th- that's wooed. Wood is truck nuts for your desk. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy them, dude. I think that's great, man. It's a conversation piece. <laughs> it is. You know, like between you, between you and HR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, before. Hey, can, can you take your friend's boots and bring them to your desk? <laughs> oh, and put and put, and just put the boot 
right around the truck nuts yes. and then take take a selfie and then put the boots back? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So then you're dipping your truck nuts into someone's boots. That's a Dave thing. Dave, yeah, you've getting them all you stacked that. up. I mean, you know, that's just like upper level meta humor. I mean, you guys know me. If anything, I'm a smart guy. And like the humor <laughs> that I enjoy is pretty darn sophisticated. So yeah, <laughs> that's like a things. joke. I mean, there, a joke. there are so many, so many brows higher than the rest of us. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what, that's what Dave Hinkle is. Yeah. Dave I'm all, is I'm the all upper brow, brow, baby. Yeah. All brow. <laughs> yeah. Just a real brow beater. <laughs> just one of them. Uh, just I, a unibrow. Yeah, so that's that's what I think wood is or wood. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave, what do you think wood means? Well, yeah, it's actually, you said it, it's wood, uh, W-U-D. Um, so you guys know how, like, in our daily lives, we're always checking our HUDs, our own personal heads-up displays? Like, you know, <laughs> how else do you need to know, like, how tired you are or how hungry you are or, like, what your health is or how much mana you have left? And like, you know, we're, we're doing this every day of Are our lives. Are you LARPing right now? <laughs> <Are> you- <laughs> um, we all are. We're, we're all just LARPers in the wind. Um, <laughs> no, so like, so, you know, we're constantly going around checking this information, keeping ourselves correct, checking ourselves before we wreck ourselves. And mm. a what is actually um, a, you know, it's a dietary aid that switches your heads up display to a waist up display. And it's basically at waist level. So if you have, you know, a bit of a tum tum, you gain a little weight down there, it obscures some of your what. So it's like, oh, I can't really see the bottom left. I don't know if I have any potions left or what kind of boots I have <laughs> equipped right now. And it's like, I don't have that information. It's vital. I don't know if I'm going to fight a boss today. And like, so, you know, maybe I should hit the treadmill lose a little bit of weight so it's it's you know it's kind of think fitbit wearables meets you know your stomach is blocking vital information about your person and uh that's what that's what a what is yeah but, dave uh, go ahead right i ahead. was gonna say like that so it's it's basically making it not useful so it's, it's not necessarily a good thing right like you no can- well look when you lose the weight and that gut is gone then it's going to be like Way better, man. I mean, because oh, then shit, it's, I have nine hundred ninety nine rupees. <laughs> yeah, it's it's motivation, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah, Dave, I I love. So I there was a while there. I felt like I'm worried that Word Rango Enterprises <laughs> isn't really coming up with the real money making ideas. Oh, like it's yeah, a, dude. like it's not with the times. Nah. Wearable technology is is like the now thing. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's got a Fitbit. They've got like their their Nike Plus watches. People are wearing Google Glass, Mm -hmm. and Google Glass is kind of a heads-up display that we could totally use. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need a Word Rango HUD, and maybe WUD is that, the Mm -hmm. Word Rango HUD. That's, but it's, that's it, great. It's it's like dick level, right? Because it, it needs to be in, a, in an area where, like, hey, if you start getting sure. a little extra padding, then you're not going to see it. Well, so it's, it's a, a cock ring. So. A, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's a like, wearable. I mean, really. Uh, so you got to go where, like, people aren't really going. And I don't yeah. think that the uh, cock ring market is caught up to the, you know, the eyeglasses market mm-hmm. or, like, the watch market. But right, right. It could There's be a sensor on it. We call it Fit Dick. <laughs> and it just well the thing is no as i mean you know it, it, yes for men we do offer a cock ring but for women we offer the yaz ring which is basically <laughs> the same thing as the yaz they just shove it up there for a couple of months and uh that, you know uh, it, that sounds like a gynecocracy <laughs> i feel like we've we've used this whole thing before i i and i'm fine with it like if we go down the same path like probably what a cock ring that has like a, a tie that comes off of it so it looks like you know like it's a business tie you know like a windsor knot and all that yeah well time uh, is a flat circle mike time is a flat it is circle. Hey, <laughs> it keeps on spinning. hey listen i don't want to brag but double windsor Ooh, nice <laughs> well done but uh yeah i i think the wearable technology market is one that we could totally go into i'm, I'm trying to think okay so you've got these different ideas as far as 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 what the wood would present and and also how it would be blocked and then you'd have to sort of you know go hit the treadmill and all that stuff yep are there other things that we could add to this or that we could have different models that do different things that would work for the word rango sort of style and stuff well you know you'd obviously have to have the chain extension going from the ring to your wallet I mean, that's the first step of <laughs> any kind of accessory, just is entering this, the accessory market. Just to be clear, is this still going from, like, our, our dicks to the to the wallet? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a long I'm chain saying. that goes down outside your Jenko jeans, and it goes up the leg of the pant into the wallet area. Um, is that normally chain. where those go? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh that's my god! If you follow the other end of the chain, that's where you're going. <laughs> I never knew this, this. This sounds problematic. We we really should beta test this. <laughs> that's true. I never really because knew if somebody where the wants to steal going. my wallet. Suddenly, I have additional problems. Yeah, yeah I but uh, yeah, and maybe... then think of all the coffees people are going to have. I mean, that's the really the silver lining there is like once they yank the dick off, then it's like. After a See? month, after a month, you're like, oh, well, you know what? At least somebody got their coffee and they got on. They their got day. their deflaculate. Yeah, <laughs> I knew that that would be useful in this episode. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I always is thought there, that the... is there going to be an app to go along with that, like find my penis? <laughs> Ooh. Well, I think it's necessary when you. I think that ar- that already yeah. exists. <laughs> it's necessary when you have a Dong wearable. Jack. Kind Dong of Jack. Yeah. Uh, Dongjack. Yeah. Dongjack.com. Uh, searching. No. <laughs> I I guess. Uh, I always thought that the chain didn't go to the wallet, but just went to the butt. Wow. That know? is a website that is not owned. What website? Dongjack.com. Like, how do you not have <laughs> dongjack.com? Are you how serious? do you not lock yeah. that up? Uh, we <laughs> might need to take that. We might need that for a wearable tech. I don't know if Fit Dick is available. Hey, hey, while you're on there, Dave, check for OK Neptune. Uh, I, could just picture, I could just picture an ad where it's like, hey, tired of your dong? Jack somebody else's dong. Dong Jack. I don't think, we'll get you a new I don't, dong. <laughs> I don't think Fit Dick is taken either, so we're we're looking pretty good so far. Okay, Neptune is open. <laughs> God damn, we're we're on fire in this yeah. episode. Like, oh, Fit Dick is very much a website. <laughs> oh, really? Are you yeah. sure? Yeah, <laughs> Dave is looking at it right now. I guess now. mine didn't load. Exercising uh, detective. Oh, <laughs> okay. Will it unload? Uh, yeah, mine isn't loading. Well, I'm I'm disappointed now because I don't know what Fit Dick's all about. Uh, okay, I'm I I love it. Uh, wood, the heads-up display for all things genitalia and uh, and fitness and, and kind of just life, I guess. There has to be some other word Rango associated things that would work well for this that I'm just I'm not thinking of, you know? I don't know. Uh, Bob, why don't you tell us what wood means? Or wood? Yeah, wood, whatever. Wood? Is this the point where I should thank somebody else for my word? Oh my god, again? And- again? Look, I, I'm bu- I'm a busy guy. You're too busy to Google some fucking words. Do you think that I have time every week to print out the entire internet oh, and then go through page by page by page? I mean, I, sure, I do it double sided, but that's still a lot of paper. Dave does it faster with all the shortcuts. I mean, that's what's amazing. <laughs> Just go ahead. Just you got to get on my OS, dog. You got to get on Hinkle OS. <laughs> Hinkle OS. <laughs> I should look into that. So, uh, Wood is a, a chiefly a Scottish word, but it means insane, mad. Mm. Okay. I I guess uh, I I over and, and indeed when you say is it you spelling wood wrong? It is an alteration of the word wood. Ah, uh, all right. But it's it's wood. All right. Who did you get this word from? Uh, Jeff Duke Jr. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff Duke. You get eighty two points, not Bob. Jeff does, and just, just just so we're clear, I take a cut right off the top of those eighty-two. Yeah, points. no, then I'm I'm just gonna go around that, so it's fine. You don't get. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna de. I'm just gonna detract some points just to be safe. Deflocculate the points. I'm gonna deflocculate that. those points. Uh, I guess I personally I overuse the word insane and like crazy. You know, I say stuff's crazy all the time. I say something. Oh, oh shit, that's it's insane. crazy in here. Shit's crazy. Uh, I guess maybe I could use wooed a little bit more. Don't you think? <laughs> well, that's well, that's wooed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh I mean, people gosh, are gonna look at wooed. you. Wooed. But oh shit, dog. Shit is wooed in here. <laughs> I've got, I've, got, I've got Spotify on. I got my coffee. I'm reading my blog. Uh, Shit is I wish wood. you would. I wish you would. <laughs> oh, hold my earrings. Hold my earrings. She drives me wood, wood, wood. Just <laughs> thinking about you lately. Oh, man. That's not fine, Young Cannibals. No. Well, I mean, I guess. Yeah. I thought that's where you're going. She drives me wood, wood, wood. <laughs> There's a number of them, you know. There's a number of the wooed songs. Because uh, I'm wooed for you. Yeah. And uh, and we need we have one more word yet. Uh, wow, this is a long show. 
based on what I'm looking at here. Uh, based on right. these numbers that are on my screen. Uh, there's a lot of... <laughs> no, see, I, we, I have the Skype numbers. I have my recording numbers. I have to subtract how long we kind of just talked at the beginning. I have mm. the clock in front of me. I have a clock that has the wrong time in front of me. Whoa, so you're really I, making this hard on yourself. I know. <laughs> uh, and you know what a else? flat circle, I It's thought. like NORAD. <laughs> you know what else is going to be difficult for you guys? This is the longest word I've ever brought to Word Rango. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm positive on this because I'm normally a short word guy. Guy. So this is probably I, I'm almost certain my longest. So word. is is this super long word like on another screen right next to a radar screen that just randomly beeps? I have it. It's actually spread across two screens. I had to, I had to plug in a second <laughs> monitor for this. Uh, okay, my word this week is Gedanken experiment. <laughs> <laughs> no, Gedanken <laughs> experiment. Gedanken experiment. God damn it, dude, really? <laughs> it's G- a word, man. It's a word. Gedanken experiment. <laughs> Gedanken experiment. Oh, my God. Uh, Ryan, how do you think that's spelled? Oh, my God. What? The experiment part, can we just, like, solve for X? That's, like, we know what that <laughs> yeah. is, right? You're, you're correct on that, yeah. So okay, the first good. part of the word, go ahead. Solve it like a math project, okay. Um, but Gedanken Gidonk- <laughs> is yep. G G A. D O N K E N. No, it is G E D A N K E N. And then Gedanken. experiment. <laughs> Gedanken experiment. Oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, who should go? I guess we'll go Bob. Bob, what do you think Gedanken experiment means? <laughs> Okay, so so this isn't a present tense word. I feel like this is a future word that okay. we, we haven't actually come up with yet. So so thank you for that. So Gedanken experiment. Um, we we really haven't had the event to activate this word. Uh, so Gedanken experiment is the event when CNN gets better than it is right now. Have you ever watched CNN recently mm. with like the sound on? It's it's awful. It's garbage. It's it's no better than talking heads interjecting fifty five minutes of their own opinion into like an hour's worth of television. Yeah. However, when Gedanken experiment happens, it's the time when the CDC, which is in Atlanta, just like CNN, accidentally releases some zombie Ebola bird flu into the world, and all the anchors on CNN get infected right there on the air. Ooh. And and CNN becomes ZNN, the Zombie News <laughs> Network. I think this is going to be great. Just think when when Carol Costello is reading the news, is and they change her her your key gen or her name below her to Scarol Costello. <laughs> Werewolf Blitzer. Okay, I'm just kind of workshopping that one. How about uh, Ashen Lee Banfield? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was just great. I'll, I'll just stick with. I love that I'll just went, stick with Sk- I'm sure you went down the list of all the employees. <laughs> of what about Rachel Madcal? <laughs> <laughs> She's on MSNBC. <laughs> uh, I forget where does where does Andis- Anderson Cooper come into this? What who is he with again? Is he a? Uh, He's he's beautiful. We can't harm him. We can't really. Yeah. But I mean, is he sort of like the Dustin Hoffman in this outbreak idea we've got going on here? I don't know. Like, like he sort of saves Rain the Man. Networks. Like he just knows the. Is that what we're talking? Oh, that's Dustin Hoffman in a different movie. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, we could go Dustin Hoffman in a number of movies. Just in general, like Dustin in Hoffman. Du- yeah. Yeah. From yeah, Huck, he probably Captain is. Huck. Sure. Yeah. The. Wait, yeah, I so I think, did we hit our threshold of CNN anchors that we know? Because I think uh, Anderson Cooper and Wolf Blitzer, I think I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I've, <laughs> I've, I've already hit that, yeah. I, I have, I've definitely, I, the Rachel Madcow, that's good. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's funny because I don't really watch a lot of, a lot of news on TV. If something really major happens in the world, I might flip it on, you know. Uh, but for the most part, it, like it's the Coldplay only time album. I really... For the most part, the only time I see CNN is like when it's mute, unmute, and it's at like a car dealership, and I'm, I'm and waiting. I'm at the airport, yeah, something yeah. like that, you know. And it's like that's the the one thing that's on the TV is that, or like you know Fox News or MSNBC. So I get what you mean. Like, yeah, it's it's just some of that stuff is almost unwatchable to me in, in terms of just how it's done, and 
and man, if there's just a way to to spice that up, if it means that we got to infect thousands thousands of of broadcast journalists, then fine, so be it. <laughs> it's worth I mean, the It's okay. Damage. They're all in Georgia. It's fine. Yeah, we, if we can contain it, then it's totally worthwhile for our entertainment. Yeah, I believe in that. Yeah, I'm into that. That's cool. Um, oh wait, and that's Gadonkin experiment. Thank you. Yeah. Can I have some points now? Eighteen. Uh, Dave, what do you think Gadonkin experiment means? Well, um, so the thing is, you know how like in the heterosexual world, dudes like a badonkadonk, mm-hmm. which is. You know, the, the big old booty, it's a big, a lot of junk in the trunk, a lot of cushion for pushing. Um, so a Gedanken is basically the gay version of that. You know, it's like, okay. you know, they, they, they very much want to have their own uh, identity when it comes to the booty department. You know, they can't co-opt all the heterosexual terms. They got to come up with some stuff of their own. And, you know, that's where the Gedanken came from. But, you know... It, they didn't just wake up one day and be like, oh, we got it. And the collective gay hive mind was just like, all right, this is what we're going to call it. It's like, no, you know, they had to experiment. They had to like mess around with a lot of words. They had to, you know, get in a workshop and tinker around. And that's where the Gedanken experiments come from. It was a period in the late 2000s where, you know, you just had the, the biggest, brightest, gayest minds of the day kind of got together and they were like, all right, we need to basically invent our own language. We've got to take command of our you know, societal presence and, and our cultural foot stamp on the world. Um, we, we, we need to get this right. And so, you know, they lock themselves in a bunker for many a fortnight and, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they just put pen to paper and got it done. Good I, I, you lost me at uh, collective gay hive mind. I think I just got stuck <laughs> oh, you right didn't know there. That about gay people? Oh, dude, I got no. tons of gay friends. They tell me about that all the time. They have like, what are they called? Uh, telepathy and like psychic powers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, it's uh, an extra chromosome yeah. of some sort or like, you know, there's a, there's a DNA. They're part corn. You mentioned earlier, Ryan, <laughs> that, that corn has more DNA or some shit. And they're yes. part corn. I think that's what yep. happened. Ah, uh, that would be amazing. I know. I know. Hey, corn is kind of shaped Amaz- like a dong. Ing. So there you go. It's a good donk and good good dong corn. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like that you m- made use of the experiment part because yeah, it, it's sort of a trial and error sort of thing. Yeah, for sure. And now, when you say though that you know that that straight dudes are into like the badonkadonk. Okay. Well, no, and I don't mean a- everybody. I mean, you know, the last thing I want to do is generalize and say like a whole entire segment. Of oh no. The last thing you want to do is generalize, but let's talk about yeah. the gay hive mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I get, I get phenomenon. what you're saying. It is, but no, I get what you're saying. What I'm saying is I want to know what's the difference between desiring the badonkadonk and desiring the gadonkin, gadonkadonk. <laughs> well, it's just, you know, it's just semantics. It's just terminology at this point. So I it's mean, still it's still just a, an ass we're talking a, about. A, a, it's still, a yeah, it's just a, a big old booty that you got to have. And, you know, admittedly, some people are into pancake butt. That's what they want. They want a nice, uh, firm, okay. so, like, you so know. So the butts can still vary that we're talking about. Yeah, of course. I okay. mean, you know, every butt is beautiful. I mean, let's not just sit here and try and label what are good butts and bad butts because... You know, last time I checked, they did that in Germany in the 40s, and it didn't go well. And, you know, like... Everybody <laughs> is sacred. Everybody is great. Yeah, you know, exactly. If a butt is wasted, butts get quite high rate. <laughs> I'll cut that out in post. Yeah, you'll need to. Uh Okay. All right. I feel that. So butts can still vary in this. Yeah, of course. You know? Okay. You, you got to find your own butt, man. Don't let somebody tell you what kind of butt you need or should should want or should desire. You know, take the time. Look at a lot of butts. Figure out I will. what's I'm the gonna, right butt I'm going to do a Google image search and yeah. I'll get back to you. It's like buying a car, man. You got to be sure. Is there like a Carfax for butts? <laughs> oh. uh, I don't know where you'd have to look for the VIN number, but I you don't, don't want you don't, you don't want any lemons, dog. <laughs> you don't want any lemons. Sort of like a, can I get a history on that butt? Yep. Just so I know what it's been through, you know? Oh, I'm man. sorry, but you had a butt accident like three months ago. I'm going to need to just kind of turn this down. <laughs> I'd like that butts kind of are their own thing. Like if you listen they to cer- certain kinds of uh, hip hop music, they'll just talk about a butt like a butt is like totally separate from you know a female. At, at some point, like there's a song that talks about like 
I don't speak your language, but your booty don't need explaining. And so I yeah. just think about like, you know, why, why would, you know, like you don't speak the language, but you speak butt, you know, like, so you're not even going to talk to her. You're just going to basically converse with her butt. I think that's from the, I think that song's from the band, the good the Gedanken experiment. <laughs> yeah. It really actually, if that's not taken. <laughs> that would make a band name. Yeah. Just all about booties. And and not just like and that's the thing when you say booty that infers a certain type of butt I think too right maybe you want the more petite kind of butt you know the the mm. not much there kind of butt I think of a uh, hoe yeah yeah there's there's different ones and yeah I agree with you like they are sort of this their own entity and they are kind of talked about that way which is why Carfax for butts needs to exist <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm telling you guys butt facts butt facts please tell me that you are all available butt facts. <laughs> Com. See, I think that's just when you like fax your butt to someone. Yeah, it might be. Nah, it says it's not available. So someone's so, raking it in. I don't think. I don't think it. <laughs> maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe butt fax is available. Even if you do speak the language, these booties have explaining. Butt these fax. Booties, <laughs> this booty has some explaining to do. Booty, you've got some explaining to do. <laughs> and this butt just walks down the stairs. Like, wow. Uh, who's next? I think Ryan, you've, mm-hmm. you've got to hit me up with the definition. What do you think Gedanken experiment means? Well, okay. I mean, science is a great thing. I think we're clear on that. Everyone can agree. Science is amazing. It's done a ton for the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but what are people's favorite things? Like, what does everyone care about? Like, everyone. Well, okay, hot dogs. A needle pulling thread. Mm, I'm gonna go ahead and say that the nah, not so much, but people care about celebrities, right? Yeah. People also care a great deal about their pets. So back in the '80s, the Gedanken experiment was basically a way to clone celebrities and then genetically engineer them with people's favorite pets. Now this was done in more of a rural setting, so. It wasn't your dogs or your cats. Like people had mules and donkeys, basically. So <laughs> back during the 80s, there was a young budding star by the name of Gabourey Sebade. Um, I know that maybe she was only a child back then, but we knew she was going to be so precious to all of us. And they decided to take a clone of Gabourey Sebade and meld her with a donkey. And that was the Gedonkin experiment. That was the first one. <laughs> 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 the 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 Gwen the Gwen Duncan experiment that was a different one it was a little more uppity. Um, you got the Russell Crowe Duncan experiment um, that one was a little more feisty, right? So mm-hmm. they went through these different uh, iterations, and then eventually we all knew it was going to be the um, crap. What I'm, oh, who who is the one? Kennedy from MTV Donkin Experiment. That was the most popular <laughs> one by far. Uh, so, so I like that there's this meshing going on with animals and celebrities. Designer too. celeb pets? I mean... That's, yeah, yeah. So it's like you're kind of hanging out with like... Uh, with like what's his face like Carson Daly except instead of Carson Daly it's like Carson Daly slash owl right yeah I mean dude who would like you love you love your dog or whatever but wouldn't you love your dog like if you've got like a Russell Terrier what if it was a Russell Wilson Terrier and your dog just looked like Seattle Seahawks starting quarterback Russell Wilson and he's just a nice guy yeah yeah and it's a nice dog and yeah yeah just like eager to go out for a walk and I mean (laughs) what what would be the ultimate for you guys? Like, you guys have your favorite celebs oh, and your favorite yeah. pets. What would be your favorite pairing of, doesn't have to be a dog, could be any kind of animal and celebrity? Ooh, this is tough. Mm-hmm. This is really tough. Um, we, you start with your favorite dog and then, you know, or your favorite cat. Yeah, but I feel like I want to. Do they have to be your favorite? I mean, can't well, I just cross, like, every cat with Hitler? That sounds terrible. That doesn't You're bad seem at like this. a good idea. <laughs> but you know what I really want? I, I would love to see Tim Allen holding a teacup pig. Okay. <laughs> holding? You know? a, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm talking like, about 
you want genetically <laughs> splicing them together? Like, yeah, yeah. So where are we talking about the fly? Shit? Again, we're again we're talking about the fly. So like they're in the same pod together, and then they come out being like a mixture of the two. Right? Mm. That's how I'm picturing. What it. about the guy who played Cal Drago? Except like somehow <laughs> a giant horse sneaks in, and he comes out a centaur. That's oh, cool. really well. That's awesome. That's but like, how would that horse it. sneak in without him noticing, though? That's that's no, the funny. Part. We're not but talking yeah. about the logistics of it. Okay. No, no, it doesn't matter. We could do it intentionally too. I mean, but they some, don't have to sneak in. But yeah. But yeah. something that would be your pet though, like I'm thinking less centaur, like more like you just want like. Okay, so maybe I have a chihuahua and I mix it with Steve Buscemi, so that way it has oh, Steve Buscemi's yeah. eyes. <laughs> yes. But it's a chihuahua, so it's this kind of wiry little dog Susan that knows. looks at me all crazy. Buscemi looking. Yeah, yeah, it's a Buscemi wawa. Thank you. Yeah. No, I mean, designer pets are already a big, big deal. You know, you got yeah. your uh, lab labradoodles and your, you know, pug noodles or pug oodle. I don't know, whatever. But yeah. if you could mix celebrity in there, like if yeah. you had like a Charlie Slapa Ops, Asa Opso Theron. <laughs> like, <laughs> Alasso Opso or whatever. Yeah, it's a tough dog to say, but you That's can mix really, that yeah. with. Charlize Theron, and you'd have a. You'd, I mean, you mix Charlize Theron with anything, and you'd have a good situation. You definitely would. Mm. See, the thing is, is I don't want to pick one that's like I don't want to pick a celebrity that's like too sexy, because then it's really going to cause problems for me with the pet. You know. So you're you're George Clooney Beagle, you're Cleagle. My Cleagle, I just. You know, it might be picking up ladies. That's fine. If I'm walking walking the dog along the beach, kind of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. But that that's a different story. I'm talking about like I don't want to mix like Sofia Vergara with like a parrot or something because I don't want to start looking at this parrot as like a sexy being. It's that's still my point. pet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that would be the sexiest parrot alive, but you know, it curves that kill. But like, it's a <laughs> it's still a parrot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I no, know. I mean, I, I, I'm, on, I'm on your side there. Yeah, you don't want to be sexually attracted to your dog. No, or your parrot. Or your parrot. Uh, yeah, although if it's at a discount, that's, hey, that's another parrots story. Parrots on the cheap. <laughs> Discountparrots.com. <laughs> uh, all right, I bet you guys want to know what Gedanken experiment means. I did not make this word up. It exists. Uh, according to Sexy Merriam-Webster, it, its first known use was in the 1940s. It was. It is an experiment that's carried out in thought only. That is a Gedanken experiment because oh. Gedanke means in German it's it's thought essentially. So uh, it's an experiment that you hy- hypothesize, you carry it out in your in your head. I'm sure if you guys had this where you think yeah, about, yeah, they're called daydreams. Exactly. Thank you. I was the my first thought is I'm like this is like a daydream that I normally have where I think about like an entire business venture and it, I go through the entire logistics of it in my head and I'll forget it like 10 minutes later, you know, but it was it's in a Gedanken experiment because it's like problem solving in your head thinking out an experiment of sorts. Hmm. Uh but it's only in thought. It, you're not writing it out or anything necessarily. You just carry it out in your thought only. That's a Gedanken experiment. Nice. It's cool. Kind it's of the a basis sweet... of this, all of our little uh, Shark Tank sessions that we have here on Word Rango. Some of for... them. Some of us, though, put things into action and create websites, and that's pretty sweet. When yeah. you have a Sinter app and when you have a Sexy Rakes mm-hmm. and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, so not always, but yes, for the most part, when we're talking about, uh, I don't know, guitars made out of wooden dildos and stuff. Mm. <laughs> or if you just like wake up every morning and then close your eyes real quick and just for a couple seconds imagine like your dad is hugging you and like <laughs> maybe it just gives you like a, a nice peck on the cheek and just like whispers in your ear like I'm proud of you, you know. <laughs> that kind of thing. Like that's always that's always like a nice start to your day, you know? Oh man. And now I know to call it a Gesundheit experiment. <laughs> so th- <laughs> thank you for that, Mike. Thank you. Sure. It's a sweet word. Uh, and all that stuff, but we'll get to escalator pitches later. We have we got to get through this stuff quick. We still have two uh, costume ideas to get to. Bob, why don't you tell me? I, I asked you guys, and you're I asked you as well. What do you think people should dress up for for Halloween? As for Halloween, part of me during. wants to to wear a spider costume and walk around and bite people. Ah, uh, no. Um, but but really, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stand outside of an olive garden and tell them about the, the endless salad and have samples of salad 
and I'm in my, you know, like my smock from Olive Garden. I haven't been to Olive Garden in a long time, mm-hmm. but uh, but I'm I'm gonna offer them little samples of salad, but at the bottom. There's just a handful of random pills. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, a a Halloween costume that's located only at a local Olive Garden, right? Like only at Olive Garden. It's going to be a long Halloween for you. <laughs> yeah. But there's going to be my, breadsticks. Uh, my, my name tag is just going to say Salacious Crumb. I love that. Oh, I like that a lot. I like that a whole oh, bunch. Nice. Uh, that was always good as far as Salacious Salads. Uh, I haven't had one yet myself. Uh, when I get to that point, like I need, I'm going to need some help. Um, for me, I had a couple ideas that I just ran through. One of my ideas was dressing up as Dave's dad. Um, <laughs> not a word. Just to, <laughs> well, to, mean, to do that first, you'd have to find a picture of me and him together. You just gotta like, how can you buy a mask, buy a mask that has like severe disappointment on like the, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like that's a costume that only really works when I'm around Dave. You know, and like another one that I had that around people, and I hope you guys don't mind that. I, we could just spit ideas too. You know, I said bring one, but I mean you could have multiple ideas. That's fine. Oh, it's uh, good to know that after we've already went. Thanks. I know, Thanks, Mike. I I, th- I think by now we've done this show for over a year. I would think by now you know how flexible I am with these ideas. So by all means, uh, I mean co robbery is another one. You know, if you've got one friend that's dressed up as Rob Zombie. You know, and then the other one's dressed up as Rob Schneider. <laughs> Go robbery! You'll be the hit yeah. of the party. But the the one that I really, really want to be, out of all of them, and this is the only other one I'll say, is uh, is I want to dress almost Godzilla like, but I want to have a, a beautiful wig of like blonde hair. Oh and yeah, and a dress. <laughs> Or red hair. But people don't see it coming, and then all of a sudden the spines start sticking out. I start towering over them. I'm going to crush the buildings that they're in because I'm... It's Tetragram! Dun, 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 Tetragram! Yeah. Do you have a profile up on OK Neptune? I mean, I'm just curious. I hope I will soon. I'm going to net me a fancy fucking Kraken. I think... <laughs> I think uh, the low hanging fruit here would have been uh, Guamo with Fourth. <laughs> you know, if you show up at your party, it's like, oh man, are you Fergie? And then you smile at them and they're like, oh shit. Oh, toothless Fergie. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, those are some good ones. Uh, well, we had others that people have sent it, but we're going to, we're going to go through our escalator pitches and our votes first. Let's do that. So let's uh, let's get through those. Ryan, really quick, give us your escalator pitch for Deflaculate. I walk along the avenue, <laughs> never thought I'd be... No, um, so my word, uh, I feel like the double C in general, like when you just look at that, it makes a really strong word. Um, deflaculate, it... It means to break something apart, but it also it just sounds like such a powerful word that could break other words apart just by its its mere syllables coming together. Um, and defloculate is a delicious drink that has um, dicks in it. So yeah, vote for defloculate uh, twenty uh, fourteen is what we're in right now. Okay, bye. Cool, uh, Dave. <laughs> word corn. Word corn. Word corn. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's just good. It's just a good word. It's a good way to get out of responsibilities. And, <laughs> you know, like if you make the mistake of drunkenly going out, like you're just getting ripped at Applebee's in Times Square. And then like you just basically <laughs> somehow, you know, accidentally sign up for f- the fucking I like, military. I like how you say if. <laughs> if yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then this is a good way to get out of it, you know? Um, at the big Applebee's. <laughs> at the big Applebee's. Uh, you know, you're just, getting, you're just getting tore up on those two-for-one Guy Fieri corn dogs. <laughs> And just like <laughs> slamming back cups of blue cheese dressing, and you're just getting so crazy, getting so crazy. Um, yeah, it's a good way to get out of it, man. Just call up mommy and daddy and be like, you know, I'm gonna need you to bring a couple bushels down here to New York, get me out of this jam. Um, you know, set set some corn bail for me, and uh, you know, let me get on with my life. So, ward corn. Oh my god, so good, such a good week. <laughs> uh, Bob, please tell us your escalator pitch for for wood. Do you need a wooed heads-up display? I close my eyes. 
only to check how much mana's gone. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> Can I have some points for that? You get 12. It's, it's, okay, I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, so, chiefly Scottish, wooed, uh, wick wooed, wooed 2014. All right. And then for me, Gedanken Experiment. We've gone over it in the last couple minutes. Awesome word. Uh, slams together some a bunch of stuff. You you never I've never heard a word that has a whole other word as big as experiment in it. Mm. If I have, maybe I'm forgetting. I'm sure I am, but I mean, yeah, I've never heard of experiment as part of another word entirely like this. And uh, and and this whole thought experiment thing, I think it's pretty sweet. I think it's a great concept mm. thing that everybody sort of does, but there isn't a word for it. And it's awesome that there is one that we are all aware of now. And when you say it, you sound smart. You sound, you know, you sound uh, intellectual. German. And yeah, you sound a little German, which in itself is kind of smart too. So by all means, a d- Gedanken experiment, everybody can use it now. Mm. You're welcome, internet. It's great. Uh, let's get some votes real quick. Uh, Ryan, you get to start. You have to pick this week between word corn, wood, and Gedanken experiment. Man. You guys stacking the deck on me here. Um, well, I don't know. I I really I really like Gedanken experiment. <laughs> Mostly for I mean the experiment I feel like is just like kind of a plus. It like just puts it over the top. But Gedanken in general is pretty amazing. So mm-hmm. uh, Gedanken experiment number one. Gedanken. And Gedanken. then uh, number two. I'm going to go with word card. <laughs> <laughs> you got to, man. You just got yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, there's really no stop in that. So. <laughs> All right. I'll go next. Uh, I have to pick between deflaculate, word corn, and wood. God damn, this is a great week. This is a great week. I mean, each of these, each of these words makes me like smile ear to ear for a different reason. Um, but the one that makes me smile the most just saying it is word corn without a doubt. Yeah. And on top of that, I think that has the best definition ever. <laughs> I mean, it, it might be one of my favorite definitions on this show yep. because you, you're getting out of military service by <laughs> paying with corn. Like can, what the can fuck? Can you imagine like the commercial, the, the few, the proud, the ones without corn. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's so good. And so, yeah, I absolutely have to give that my number one, my number two. I'm, I'm sorry, Ryan. I really love Deflaculate, but Wood, there's something great about that and just how simple it is. And uh, I got to throw a point at it. You know, I feel like I, I feel <laughs> like it's toss earned it. Toss it a point. Toss it a point, you know? So uh, Wood gets my number two. Dave, you have to pick between Wood, Deflaculate, and Gedanken Experiment. All right. I'm going to have to go. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Wood um, for my number one. Uh, I just really like that idea. I want us to help people lose weight and become better and, uh, you know, achieve the true person that they envision themselves to be. And, uh, for number two, I'm going to have to go Gedanken experiment because, uh, you know, I Gedanka you for bringing that to us. So good job. (laughs) All right. And, uh, Bob, you have to pick this week between deflaculate word corn and Gedanken experiment. What was that fourth word? There was not a fourth word as far as it concerns you. I remember you. a fourth word. No. Okay. Um, since I have had my intern calculate that there's no way I can screw this up this week, thanks, Internet, um, I'm going to go with my number one being deflaculate because I really enjoy uh, sea monsters on OK Neptune. <laughs> and uh, my number two two word is going to be word corn all right and that tells let me just add that point and there that's it congratulations dave you've yeah. won this week with word corn yeah, word, yeah, corn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. word corn wins uh absolutely great stuff uh this is a this is a good week Good week for words, good week for definitions, Mm -hmm. and good week for costume ideas because it's Halloween. Everybody's getting candy. Bob, people want to write into us and tell us what they dressed up as or what they plan to dress up as for Halloween. How do they do that? Tell us about your crazy, salacious costume ideas at Gmail, wordrango at gmail.com. Also on the Facebooks and the Twitters, you probably know the address. Try uh, wordrango or at wordrango or, yeah, just, just do that. 
You know, we uh, we actually put out earlier this week, what would you want to dress up as, as one of our words. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a couple of responses. Uh, Jason Copeland says, I'm getting spider costumes for my cats, and I'm going as a priapism. <laughs> Good on you. Or, or bad on you, or bad on something eventually. Um, Eric Feliz said, I'm dressing up as an elderly woman, and I'm giving out cat bibelos to trick-or-treaters. Ooh. <laughs> oh. That's precious. I like they it. They will. They will egg your house. <laughs> I like it a lot. You should go listen to us on uh, on the iTunes and the Stitchers. And uh, if you want new ways to scare people this week, just uh, tell them that you're either a member of One Direction, that uh, you're joining ISIS, or that you're from West Africa. Oh boy! There you go. Oh boy! Halloween secrets. All right. You're welcome. And if you go to bit.ly slash wordrango, it'll take you to our iTunes page where you can subscribe to the show. You can also rate us five stars and leave a review. And that helps us in many ways. I'm not going to tell you all the ways. I try to tell you guys the ways and it doesn't work. So I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it open-ended. Who knows what'll happen? Maybe you'll get a prize. Maybe you won't. Uh, maybe you'll just enrich other people's lives. Pretty much can guarantee that. And you can also go to Stitcher, listen to us on there. Go to wordrango.com. Uh, we have RSS feeds for you to su- subscribe in other ways. Uh, whatever ways you try to do it, I don't I don't care. It's up to you. If you want to print out the RSS feed and try and shove it up your nose or something, maybe it'll work. I don't know. I don't know how these things work. Uh, all I know is that we give you guys words and their definitions every week, and if you guys can share that, then other people are going to hear things like word corn and Gedanken experiments and wooed and the and you know deflaculate and and you know we we just we just gave you like this amazing just like array of of fantastic thoughts and words yeah. that you probably didn't hear before and it's totally going to enrich your life don't no. don't lie to me don't tell me it's not going to you know it will uh and and it could help others which is why you should share the show and uh let others know and uh and do it you know what here's an idea so for those of you that have trick-or-treaters that come to your door what you could do is instead of giving out candy give out episodes of word rango (laughs) (laughs) or like maybe you could do like fortune cookies and then you just put on like the uh, on like the little thing that you know they open up and they take the little slips maybe we could put like uh, a word you know like maybe put priapism and then put like the uh the link on there to the episode like episode five i think is priapism uh and you know then that way they can you know they get a little bit of both they get a little bit of a snack and they also get you know something that definitely is going to help them i out. bet eight-year-olds would love that yeah absolutely do that internet do it yeah so that's the sort of thing that i expect out of you people this week we'll be back next week on a on a not halloween themed episode maybe we can just do it twice who knows this is it'll bu- still be spooky Maybe. And we will definitely have four words and their definitions. This has been Word Rango. Uh, get that booty, I guess. Get that booty. Get that booty. Get that booty. Thanks, Bob. <laughs>